Okay guys, so this is gonna be a quick video. I say quick, probably gonna be like 15 minutes. It's gonna be a video on how to make, not necessarily this entire thumbnail, but how to make Roblox characters look this cool in Photoshop. So as a comparison, if you were to screen capture and say cut out somebody from Roblox inside the game, this might be what it looks like. My character, it's, this is pretty poor cut job, but you get the idea. Like it's just the lighting's not good. The uh, rendering's really bad. You can take and actually import the character into Roblox Studio, export it out, and then import it into Blender, and then you can do a render that looks more like this, even with a transparent background right out of the uh, Blender app. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. So first thing you want to do is open up Roblox Studio. Oops. Um, you're going to want to go to New. Don't, don't mind this. I was playing with a different one. And you're going to come up to a blank canvas like this. Well, in a second you will. And um, if it asks what's, what place you want to make, because I, I swear mine asked that the first time, Ch just choose the base plate one that looks like this. It's got like the, the Lego board, if you will. Uh, and then the next thing you want to do is you want to be able to import the character or characters that you want to export into Blender. And you can actually import all kinds of things. Like you could build an entire world in Roblox Studio, export the whole thing, and import that entire thing into Blender. Um, but we're going to show just characters. So what we want to do is you want to go to plugins and you want to go to manage plugins and in the new plugin management. So this is kind of weird to me. You got this plugin management and you got this plugin management. I don't know. You can't hit plus here because it tells you to do it there. So why this pops up, I don't know. You want to click on find plugins. In the search box, type already pro. And you're looking for the plugin that actually costs money. So you can see, I, I haven't tested these. Do they work? I don't know. I'm not going to say whether or not they work or not, any of these. But there's this one here by Already Pro. It's got 14,000 installs. So likely, and, and this is the one I use. It costs you 25 Robux, though, so you have to actually pay for it. Um, but this is, a, this is a good one. This is the one that I've been using, and it does work. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And what I want to do next is under pl plugins, once you add that plugin to your, your uh, Roblox Studio, you click on the Load Character Pro button. See it right there? I'm going to click this button, and then I'm going to type in a character I want to load up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. I don't know why there's no preview, but we're going to click R15 to load the character. And there is a character. Perfect. So then I'm also going to load up mine. And we're going to load that character, too. And that's too funny. It puts them on top of each other. So I'm going to move about here. I'm going to move these characters. I don't know why one's on top of the other. That's just fantastic. Okay, so we're going to put them right next to each other. Like that. And actually, I'm going to change this up a little bit just because I don't want to complicate it. We're actually going to delete mine. I apologize. Okay, so so I've added the character I want, which is Violet35. And what I want to do is you can just leave it base like this if you want, you, but or you can move things around. Like, as an example, you could move her hands and her arms and her legs. You could move objects. The character here, if you expand it, you can see all the various objects associated with that character. So as an example, if I wanted to move this arm, this, this arm here is her left arm. So I'm going to say grab the left upper, left lower, and left hand. And you can see it's got boxes around them now. That means that it's... Uh, it's frustrating me. That means that I've got them all selected, right? So then what I can do is I can go over to home and I can say move or rotate. And then um, you can grab these bubbles here and you can rotate the arm. So what? So it rotates in the center of that. So as you can see, it's like it's not like it pivots on the shoulder. It pivots in the middle of that object. So if I wanted to rotate this arm like that, which is fine because it would be like sticking her hand out. Now you can see her shoulders off. So then I had to say move. And then I grab like this arrow here and it'll slide it forward. And then the green one to slide it up a little bit. And we can also zoom in just to make sure we like that. Like, does it look good on the shoulder still? Kind of looks all right, right? I think so. You could also grab just the hand if you wanted, like left hand. And then you could say rotate. And you can grab any of these spinny circles to rotate it. So I'm going to grab this green one and you can rotate it like, like so, right? So let's just rotate it a little bit maybe in like that like that I think that looks right and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the left or right um, right hand right hand right arm upper and lower arms 
And then I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm gonna, but I'm going to rotate this one just a little tiny bit back. Go to move. Slide it just a little bit like this and just a tad bit up. So the hand's just kind of moving back just a, a little bit, right? So it's not just a stationary, boring look. And then we can also do the same thing with the legs. Like you could say leg, left um, leg, upper leg, and left foot. Grabs that whole leg piece right there. So one thing you could do is you could grab like the upper leg only. You could say rotate just the upper leg. I can move it just a tad like this. And then I'm going to say move that forward so that it fits the hip right again. And then I'm going to grab the left lower leg and the left foot. And I'm going to go ahead and slide that forward a little bit so it fits again. So it doesn't look like they're broken off. So I just moved her foot just a tad forward, right? And I'm going to... I'm planning on doing the same for the other one. So I'm going to say right foot, right lower leg, right upper leg, right? Okay, so we're just going to move the right upper leg. Sorry, I didn't mean to select all those. So we're going to grab this right upper leg. I'm going to say rotate, and I'm going to rotate it just a tad. And then I'm going to move it just a little bit back. Am I moving that the right way? Yeah, I think so. I think that still looks good. And then we're going to go ahead and take the right lower leg and right foot and we're just going to slide it back a little bit. So I moved the character around just a little bit. You can do the same kind of thing with the head. Maybe if you wanted to tilt the head a tad. So you could grab like head here, right? And then I could rotate it and just rotate it a little bit. Uh, where's the blue? A little bit to the side maybe. Oh, that's funny. It didn't grab. So the head, you also have to grab something else here. I need to grab the bunny. No, not tail. I need to grab the glasses. I need to grab, what's humanoid? No, I need to grab the blonde hair. And then I can rotate the whole thing. Oh, sorry. I need to grab the bunny ears, headband. Okay. And then maybe I can rotate the whole thing. There we go. So I could tilt it to the side a little bit. Take and, and just let's just make sure that the head is still decent, like in the center of the body. Because I did rotate a little bit. It looks okay, right? So now she's got her head tilted to the side. Her hands are out like that. So it's kind of cool looking, right? It looks better than just standing there. So unselect it. And you can see, I mean, it's decent, right? It looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we've got it kind of set up the way we want with the hands and the legs and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and contract this. So I've got just the character now. I'm going to right-click that character, and I'm going to say Export Selection. And I'm going to put it right here. And we're going to call this Butterfly. That's the name of this character, a Violet 35. <coughs> I'm going to save that. So it exported as an object. Now I'm going to go into Blender. So I've got Blender here. Oops, let me start a new one. So we're going to say New, and I want General. Don't save. So I've got a new, a new environment here in Blender. Blender's controls are a little bit different. So in Roblox Studio, when you want to move around like this, you hold your right mouse button and use like your ASDF characters, ASD, uh, WASD characters to, to move it around as you do that. Whereas that's not how it works in Blender. When you get into Blender to rotate, you hold the middle mouse button down and you can move it about. And Blender wants to pivot off of your viewpoint thing here. So it, you can't move around with a ASD and W. It just doesn't, it doesn't work the same way. So... I'm not a Blender expert, so I'm not going to explain all the cool tools or all the cool um, functions and, and capabilities of it. What we're going to do in Blender is simple. We're just going to import this object, adjust the lighting, adjust the camera a little bit, and render it out. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this cube over here, and I'm going to delete it. So I don't want, I don't want that cube. And uh, eventually I'm going to move that camera, but for now we'll leave it. And then we're going to move that light too, because I don't want that angle on the character. I want the view to be more down here instead of up here. So next thing you're going to do is file. You're going to import, and you're going to import a Wavefront OBJ. I don't know what Wavefront is. All I know is that when you export it out of Roblox Studio, it makes an OBJ file. So we're going to go ahead and import the OBJ that we exported. It's the import. And we have a character. I'm going to hit... Um, S and it and it'll size it for me because I don't want it super big so I'm gonna bring it down like normal size here so I hit S on the keyboard while selecting while selecting that character so butterfly when I first imported it was automatically selected then I hit S on the keyboard and it lets me size it so let's size her to about like that and then we're gonna go ahead and rotate her now this controls on the rotation are very similar to to um, Roblox Studio right you've got basically X Y Z accesses 
to rotate. So the one we want to grab to rotate her so that she spins to what the camera is already looking at is the blue one. So I'm just going to grab that blue line and then I'm going to rotate her so she's facing the camera essentially. However, I'd like her to face the camera so she can face the camera like right there. All right. So then next what I want to do is I want to grab the camera. So I'm going to click over here on the camera and I want to move this camera down. So I'm going to choose the the button over here for move and then I grab the camera so now if I move this camera if I grab that blue arrow it'll move it literally straight up and down so I'm grabbing that middle mouse button change my view so I can see what it is that I'm like trying to trying to get a grasp of what I'm looking at here so I think that's probably pretty good maybe a little bit lower I think that's decent right if you look at the angles kind of facing at her face so the camera is currently aimed down though so we don't want to take and hit the rotate button and the rotate button's kind of funny with this camera because it's not, like, you know what, like if you look at the, the orientation of the camera versus these rotations, like if I green, grab the green one, it's going to rotate on an axis and the red one's on, on a different axis, but none of them are in the center. So actually if you grab the center, like it, see how it lights up like a ball? So if I grab that center, I can actually just move the whole thing at once. And so that's my goal. I'm going to try to take it and I'm going to position with the middle mouse button, I'm going to position that dot in the center. Then I'm going to grab this camera and I'm going to put it to where the box is basically in the middle of her. If that makes any sense at all. And you can see so like this would be looking too far up. That's looking too far down. I'm going to take that box so that it's aimed basically dead center of her body. And so you can see now the camera kind of aims at her. Maybe it's a little too high actually. So let's just bring that down just a tad. Um, and then the next thing you do with the camera is the... the um, uh, focal, um, what's this called? So this would be like the zoom, I guess you could say, of the camera. Like this would zoom really close, right? I want to make sure I get more of her frame, so I'm going to zoom out like that. And we'll do a quick, quick render by just clicking on render, render image. And you can see it's decent, right? It's most of the frame. So I, I kind of probably should change it just a tad. I can grab this, and I had, um, let's see, too much underneath of her, too much leg, uh, blank space under her legs. So I just moved it up. So now it's a little bit in the center. Um, what I want to do now is also zoom this in just a tad so that I can actually get more of her in the frame. I'm trying to fill the whole frame if possible. So there you go. So that's pretty close. So I think that's a good position. I don't like the lighting. The, the shadows are too harsh and, and it's not bright enough. So we're also going to grab this one light. When you created the Blender, um, a a, a world in Blender, or whatever this is called, a scene rather, I guess you could call it. Um, it's going to give you one light, so we're just going to use this same light. I'm going to grab him, and I'm just going to move him where I want him. So it's going to be something like that. I want that camera, or the, excuse me, the the light to be off to the side a tad, not too close. So I don't know, some something like this. You can see where I stuck it somewhere between the camera essentially and her. So now if I render again, you'll see the lighting is much better. So it's, it's smoother, it's softer, it's more like a, uh, and it's got a decent amount of shadow still, which kind of looks cool. Um, you can see her legs are a little bit weird. And that's probably because I didn't quite move them correctly in Roblox Studio. So that's, <laughs> look at that one. Oh my gosh. So you're gonna have to play around with how you move the objects. Obviously I did a terrible job with whatever happened to her leg there. That's kind of a bummer. So actually, to be honest with you, I believe you can move these same pieces in Studio or a uh, Blender. So if I were to expand Butterfly, expand Butterfly again, I think you can double click it. No, maybe not. See, I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm doing. I don't in Blender. There is a way I'm pretty sure to edit this object in Blender, though. And you could likely move these things around, but I guess we'll we'll deal with that. You can you'd have to just if you didn't want to do it in Blender, you could just re-export. You could go back into Roblox Studio, fix the leg that it clearly you can see it's busted here too. Wow, and then re-export it and bring it back in. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, so basically what I want to do next though is when I render this, it has a background. Like this is this gray here is actual background. So if I were to take this image and then drop it into Photoshop and stick it on a thumbnail, I'd have to manually crop this gray out. And I don't want to do that, right? Why should I manually crop something out when this is rendered by a computer anyways? Why don't I just render it with a transparent background? So that's what we're actually gonna do. So to do that, you want there's two things you want to check. One is on the output properties, make sure it's PNG because that's going to have transparency capabilities. And then that's on the output button here. And then the other one you want to check is actually under uh, render properties. And funny enough, it's actually under film. And you want to make sure you check this transparent box. 
film transparent. So now when I render, you'll see the difference. Now it's got a transparent hat. You see this is like a, a checkerboard. That means it's transparent. That's the common common uh, way to display transparent. So, so now I've got a transparent background like that. So now if I like the lighting, if I like the way it's done, if I think it looks good, I can literally click on image, save as. I want to save this as, uh, I'm going to put it on my desktop, and we're going to call this um, butterfly. I don't know why it's red like that. That's kind of weird. Whatever. Save it. Now I have a transparent image. So now what I'm going to do is minimize that, minimize that, minimize that. I don't know why that's still open. Minimize that. And I'm going to go ahead and take this transparent image I just saved called butterfly on my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it right into here. And now I've got an object in Photoshop transparent automatically that I can throw right onto my thumbnails that I'm creating or header for your YouTube video, whatever it is. When I drag it in, it goes into um, basically resize or edit mode. So, so in Photoshop, control minus will contract and expand. If you don't have Photoshop, um, you could likely do this in Paint too, but it's a little bit harder. So, or, or uh, uh, Paint 3D, I think is the new one. In, in Windows. So I'm going to resize it to the size that I want. So say I want her about this big. Hit that checkbox button. Now I've got an object. I can drag it around and I can put it where I want it to go. So let's go ahead and um, so, so I also put a drop shadow on this other one. So we're just going to go hide and hide the old, old one. And I'm going to right click on this. Not right click on it. I'm going to just hit FX. I'm going to say drop shadow. And we're going to put a drop shadow so it just adds a little bit more depth to, this, to the edges. And now you can see I've got a character here that looks really good comparatively to the original that we started with, right? So you've got a, a nice transparent image rendered right out of Blender, created from Roblox Studio. And this is, you know, basically what you do with the screenshot. Looks absolutely horrible. Rendered right out of Roblox Studio looks absolutely amazing. It literally looks like a uh, character that, you know, the Legos sitting right in front of you or something. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comments. Thanks.